there's nothing worse than when you look at your cuttings and they're all dead. Look at this. For Scythia, it's totally rotten and it's dead. And uh, it's the same with all its cuttings, in fact. Um, so why is it that cuttings fail? Uh, there's nothing worse than looking at something like that where they have, but also, of course, it's really nice when we get a batch of cuttings and they've all succeeded. And so here you can see this for Scythia, I've rooted, and they're growing well from a hardwood cutting. So today's session is all about looking at the reasons why cuttings fail and some of the science behind that and how what we can do to make sure that we don't get so many failures next time. One of the reasons why cuttings work is because it's all to do with toti potency and that's the ability of a plant to reproduce cells. And you can see here by the length of these internodes that this plant is producing lots of cells quickly. And what that means is it actually would be quite good to take a cutting off this because it's so good at producing new cells. And this is much better than having a sort of an older plant whereby there's very little growth. A node, but you can see that makes a really good cutting. So a bad cutting would be a plant like this. So you can see the leaves are much older there's a little bit of disease, there's a bit of pest and disease that's occurred. It's already flowered and it's put all its energy into producing seed. So that's not going to make a very good cutting and it's going to be less likely to root. So an older cutting is less likely to root. So anything that's been cut back is able to regenerate quickly and is more likely to be good at producing roots. And that's why in the nursery, of course, they have what are called stock plants that they cut back each year. So, for example, here, this is an excellent plant used as a stock plant. It's a lemon verbena, a loisia trifilia, or lipia trifilla. And you can see here that there's been some lovely growth put on. The flowers have been pinched out because we don't want anything flowering because it's using up 30-40% of its energy into setting seed and we want it to produce roots. So when you're selecting a cutting, you want a good stock plant, lots of nice shoots produced as a result of it, which give this sort of what we call toti potency, where they're dividing quickly, so that the, when you take the cutting, they're more likely to root and you'll have much greater success. So the stock plant is cut back each year, whether it be a root cutting, or whether it be a softwood cutting or semi-ripe, they cut back to produce new growth, lots of cells dividing. So let's have a look at some good cuttings and some not so good cuttings. So when it comes to taking a cutting, obviously you want enough food in the stem to sustain the plant. And you want three, really at least three good leaves that have expanded um, so that they can photosynthesize and they can send the food into the plant to produce energy for rooting and obviously you want to make sure it's not flowering because all the energy is going into flowering uh, rather than producing roots so looking at the cuttings here here's uh, one of the lemon verbena plants so you'd want a cutting at least something like that and then that in about three weeks providing you've got the bottom heat and you don't need to have it heated you can have it for example in the weather we've had July August right the way through you can make use of the natural heat and as long as you keep the tops cool so you keep the bottoms warm tops cool then that will root quite quickly the reason for keeping the bottoms warm is that that increases respiration and so the plant produces roots much quicker we obviously need to keep the tops cool because it's going to wilt otherwise. So that sort of cutting, as you can see, will produce a plant, a nice healthy root system within about three weeks, if it's about something between 15 and 21 degrees Celsius at the base. It will still produce roots if it's a little bit cooler, but it will take longer. 
looking at the viburnum, this is viburnum burkwoodii, you can see that it's just basically three sets of nodes and the cutting there, and it's produced a sort of a nice root there with three sets. Um, some people might go four sets and it will still produce a, you know, a, a root off that. So that's a semi-ripe cutting where it's sort of a little bit sort of riper at the base so you've got the soft wood and then it ripens a bit and so that produces a good cutting again that was within three weeks to strike that. If we look at the Sarka Coca again you can see there's a good length here and again within three weeks you'll get a cutting like that. That was taken uh, in sort of uh, August and so it was rooting quite nicely in August after three weeks. This cutting is too small and it was slightly diseased so if you're taking a cutting this is a Rissamon Bowles Mauve and you would have been better taking a cutting bigger and then of course uh, losing the lower node that bottom part, stripping the bottom third of leaves okay now it's a good idea to take cuttings of this plant because they're tender and you can lose them but something like that would have been a better cutting a bit bigger free from pests and diseases and that would have been better one to root this little croissant there you go a little cutting like that and again within two to three weeks you're going to have something quite big off that sort of cutting With Artemisia, and this is a good time of the year to take Artemisia cuttings, again you can go either something like this, this is about 4 inches, 100 mil long, but you could go less. But remember to keep the tops nice and uh, misted, I just use a spray bottle and then that keeps the tops cool. And again within about 3 weeks we should have some roots off this, it should be callousing up now, these were taken about a week ago and another couple of weeks we'll have some roots on this Artemisia Paris Castle. So when it comes to the compost it's very important that the compost is just moist enough so when you hold it together it keeps its shape and when you touch it it breaks up so that's about the right moisture content and obviously you're going to need moisture for uh, photosynthesis respiration to take place and keep the cutting from wilting um, the other key thing we're going to need is what's called air-filled porosity, AFP. And uh, the key thing about air-filled porosity is we want to make sure that there's enough air or oxygen at the roots so the plants can respire. And respiration is where the plants take the food made from photosynthesis and with oxygen they produce energy. And it's that energy which enables the plant to use that and produce roots and grow and basically for the cells to divide it needs that energy. So in order to get that this compost on its own is okay but by adding something like perlite something like about 50-50 that will improve the air-filled porosity. You can actually use something like grit with uh, vermiculite, but in this case we're going to use perlite. I'm going to mix it into this sort of, it's a bit like silver grow. Uh, it's a peat-free compost, and so we mix it in. You can wear a mask, of course, because it can be dusty, the perlite. I have damped things down a bit here. Um, and you can see by mixing that in, it's almost like lightened that compost because there's more air in it and that makes a really good mix and once it's even colour, you've got even snow pattern if you like uh, over the throughout the compost then you know it's about right and that now will make a very good rooting compost so air filled porosity is key to ensure that you get the oxygen for respiration to produce the energy. If it's compacted, you won't root your cuttings. To make sure that your cuttings are going to be successful, you're going to need uh, obviously a good cover, whether it be something plastic. Uh, you can see here I've made a bit of a makeshift propagation unit there. 
and this one is just an ordinary shop bought one so I've got my cover I've got a bottle which is really useful for keeping humidity just spraying on the leaves usually in the morning and at night and if I'm in in the daytime I'll give it another couple of sprays and then I've got here also which is quite good a little soil thermometer which tells me what the temperature is doing in the soil so ideally uh, to root cuttings quickly we want about 18 to 21 but they will root obviously with less temperature obviously I'm not using heat at the moment because it's been warm enough so just that checks my soil temperature keep it humid and then we'll just pop the lid on and of course one of the key things is taking your cutting at the right time of the year so we've just gone through sort of July August which is perfect for your semi ripe cuttings and prior to that of course you've got through April May uh, June uh, you've got that period of time where you can take your softwood cuttings and of course if you force them inside even earlier than that and then of course we go into the winter once the leaves are off the tree or off the shrubs and uh, you can take some hardwood cuttings so the time of the year is really important I hope you enjoyed the video if you did then please just cl click the like and uh, subscribe below and click the bell and then you'll get notified of future videos horticultural videos and so I hope you are successful with your propagation in the future um, certainly this July and August with the warmth make, taking advantage of that is a big thing especially with the energy sort of problems we have try and utilize the warmth that's out there keep the tops cool keep the bottoms warm and uh, make sure you've got the right length of cutting and make sure it's free from pests and diseases and then you've got some nice expanded leaves and you should get some good success with that. See you next time.